Well, thank you guys for coming today. Um, it's the beginning of our, our workshop series this uh, semester. And this week, zip grade. Next week, we're going to talk about connected teaching. Um, and same place, same time. And then the week after that, same place, same time, uh, there's a workshop on geeky pedagogy. So uh, both book-based uh, workshops. So turn it over to... Adam, when he gets going. <sighs> All right, we're going. Looks like this is still downloading Airy Media. We'll get there eventually. I'm All still right, working on it. Don't you? Susan's not here yet. Is she coming to this one? She said she was. It says accepted. Okay. It has not changed as of yet. I'm not going to shame her on television. <laughs> <laughs> we'll set it down. And cut. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best time to shame someone. That's yeah. Lovely. Well, there's quite a bit to get through this, so we'll go ahead. Um, how many of you used Scantrons in the past? Yeah. And I've used it, um, but, of course, when I first came to OCU, of course, we didn't have Scantron machine anywhere, so I'm like, well... There's not that many students. <laughs> we can just grade these manually. Um, but uh, when I came across ZipGrade, and I don't even remember why I was coming across ZipGrade, but um, I found out that um, it did a lot of what Scantron had done, but so much more. Um, and so you can see here on the website, ZipGrade.com, it's pretty easy to get to. Um, you can, in order to use any of the functions, though, you do have to create an account. There's a free account, and the free account, if you go, you can actually look down here, and it says um, a free download, you get 100 scans per month, and so for most people, that's fine, and scans is what you're, you're going to actually be using your phone to, to scan um, your phone or um, a tablet or something, that, something that's got the app, because there's an app that you can download for this, right? um, and Oops, let me just do this real quick. Okay. And what's pretty cool about this is that um, you can, um, with, with that 100, you, you basically, you never have to buy anything. Now, I started running into, where, when I had like finals, I had more than 100 scans. I had my like my last exam, my final, and I actually had, I had more than one, um, 100 scans a month. So I went ahead and purchased the annual plan for $6.99 a year. What? Six <laughs> six dollars and ninety nine cents a year, and so now I get unlimited scans. You get every functionality there is, and it's got a comparison as to what it means to be have a paid subscription or not. But for most people, you don't have to. But you do have to create an account. Right? I'm gonna go ahead and log in though, and to my account. Can we just use your account? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll get, get you the keystrokes for the password. Really? <laughs> All right. I'm not going to save that because I don't want them. To, right. So this, of course, gives my information. And here's I've got 10 months now still, and it's not a it's not an automatically renewal. I have to go in and do it. So that's that's pretty nice as well. Um, unlimited scans. Unlimited scans. Okay. I can do as many as I want. Yeah. Um, what's cool about this though, once you get to this area, then you can start looking at the different tabs across the top, and it's got um, quizzes. You can click on that. You'll see that I've got um, a couple of quizzes. I've archived a bunch of stuff because you can archive stuff, so it just doesn't show up and clutter up stuff. But here's a couple that I did uh, this past semester, um, and I can click on each one, and it'll it'll give me um, some information about the quiz. And we're going to come back to this in just a little bit as well um, in way of the, the st statistics that it can show for you um, when you scan these things. But we'll come back to that. Um, also, it's got a thing about classes. You can populate and have um, your roster in here, which is going to be really nice if you want to customize your answer sheets to pre-print your students' names and codes on there. I'll talk about why that's important in a little bit. If you just want the basic functions, you're just kind of like, I'm used to Scantron, show me what I can do that's kind of similar to Scantron. Um, go to Answer Sheets, and you've got three different options here. Uh, 20 questions, form, a 50 question, or a 100 question. And if you click on each one, it gives you a little preview of what those are. They're all PDFs. And so this shows you what that is. Students can then write their name in, and then they can um, answer the questions based on the questionnaire you give them. Um, and then you set up your phone to 
um, scan those. You, your, your, the phone app has um, basically the same answer sheet. You just click, I chose the 20 question answer sheet. I'm going to call it this quiz. And then it says you want to set up your key. And you go through and this is the answers. You can either scan a key. You can, you can take one of these and fill it out as the key. And say this is my key and take a picture of it. And then that's it automatically records that. Or you can go through and actually just click on the little bullets that are on your phone to make the key as well. And I'll see if I can't get that to you um, pretty soon. All right, so that's like 20 questions there. You've so it's got not necessary for students to buy a scan phone. No, no, no. Percent, no. You actually can print those, hand those out with yep. the Oh, yeah, right. exactly. Um, so you got 20, 50, 100. Of course, you don't have to use that many. Um, with a 20, actually, it prints off two per page. So you can just split it down the middle and, and save some paper if you want. And so if all you're wanting to do is kind of use it like Scantron, you can do that. When you scan it with your phone, it automatically records. It takes a picture of the name slot, so it says, shows whose it was. Um, and then also, of course, the responses. And I'm sh I'll show you an example of what the response sheet looks like after they've graded it in just a little bit. And I would, if, say you use, uh, let's say you have a 67 question test. Yeah. You're going to use the uh, 100 question. Right. Okay. right. So does the machine know to divide the correct answers by 67, even though it's... Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it's just, how many ever questions, and you, you can actually assign more than, say, one point per question. So okay. you've got a question that you think, this is a stellar question. Uh, Mike Williams made this question up. I'm going to charge. I'm going to make this worth right there. make this worth five points and everything else worth a half point. Okay. You can do that, okay. and it so weighed. it weighs that in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And so you can use these, or you can customize your own. And I didn't realize this until I really started diving deep into it. If you go down here, you can customize an answer sheet. Okay. And so here I've got some customized answer sheets that I've already done. I'll pull up one from. Oh, let's go. Well, here's one we're going to do in just a little bit. OCU Trivia. Um, here's what it's going to look like. And it's just going to create a little PDF. And here's what it looks like. So it's just um, eight questions. I've got true and false and all choice. And uh, it's actually it's multiple select that you can use as well. With just the templated ones, you've got A through E. 20 questions, 50 questions, or 100 questions. But you can go all the way A through J if you wanted to. Because I've done that in my classes. I'll show you real quick an example of one. Um, let's see the final exam. This one right here. Let me show you this one. <clears throat> so there's one. I've got A through E. I've got some A and B. And I've got A through J's. Because these are matching. So I've got on the, their actual exam, here's the questions, here's what you match it to, and I've got all those. And let's say that um, there's more than one answer. I can click, select that there's more than one answer. It doesn't have to be just one answer. Um, and so that's on there as well. When it does a scan, you know, one of the problems I have with scan phones is that, you know, students will change the erase, 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 yeah. and then they put, you mm -hmm. know, the dot over there. But sometimes that erase, you know, doesn't. Right wipe out that dot. Right. Have you found it to be good with respect to being able to pick Yeah, up and some students will use a, a pen that can be erased because you can use whatever you want to on this. It doesn't have to be number two pencil or blue or black ink. My students have used every color from purple to get green <laughs> and it works fine. All right. um, what's nice though is um, with the app when you scan it you can then review the scanned image mm -hmm. and it takes a look to see what they missed and it's basically it's a picture of this of the sheet and so if they've gone through and just like manually marked through and circled and this is what I wanted right they've marked through the old one this one and one well it's going to automatically count that wrong but you can go in and manually correct that the faculty does or the student does the, the, the faculty does once it's in your hands that and it's it's okay. yours yeah and so I'll have usually when I'm Sitting there scanning them, you, of course you can see that there's something wrong. It's like there's a big old X over this one. And so uh, obviously when you scan it, it counts it wrong. But then you go through and say, okay, that was question number five. Ah, I see it now. And you can manually correct that. So and it automatically updates the question. They have that in the, the start of the test to make sure that everybody does the same. Mm -hmm. thing and I, they want to mark one out. Is that what you do? Yeah, and then what I do, the first week of class, we go, we do one of these. And because they 
have never used these in the past, right? And and they've used scantrons or standardized tests. They've done that before, but nothing like this. And and so we do a little sample like we're going to do with you guys today. So here's all the different things we can do for this. Here's how I scan it. I show them everything. I'm transparent about how it works. I said, oh, looks like someone got something wrong. They they have two answers or they marked one out. And so I can go through and I show them. Uh, here's how I can correct that. I'm um, right here on my phone. And it, it gets a little frustrating at times when the student who just turned their exam in wants to know what their grade is right then, because I can do that. I can just, looks like you got a 75. Right? But then the line gets all backed up. <laughs> it's like, well, I want my grade. I want my grade. It's like, you know, I'm, I'll do this later. And because my tires too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the instant gratification that uh, so many of our students want. But so, what's the advantage of doing this over a quiz or using D2L or any other system? Well, I don't use D2L for my on-ground classes for the exams because, um, and this is really just for the on-ground classes, right? So. Like for my fundamentals biology students, I got 46 students in the class. They've taken an exam. Um, I don't want them all just bringing their computers and logging in to, to take a bet on D2L. Um, and not all of my exam is multiple choice or can be done here. Um, I'll have like the first five pages are this and the second five pages are written or something like that. And so this puts it all in one place. But it's been, a, um, and I'm, so many students are used to the paper format of the exam and that type of thing. Um, so, I, granted, D2L you can automatically set it up to automatically grade. You don't have to do anything, and that's that's good for a lot of classes, right? But I do agree that the response until mm -hmm. we have responses or something like yeah. that locks down a browser mm -hmm. so that they can't go around and you know, find resources. Right, and Proctor U is going to help us with that as well. Proc with the proctoring service we now have contract with that helps, but. Um, for most of my classes that are on ground, I'll never use D2L for an exam, probably. I'll use D2L for exams in my online class. And you have technical issues, too. Oh, you know, my computer isn't working. Mm -hmm. I ran out of charge. You know, i got to go over here and charge mm -hmm. it. Yeah, they all have you know, to be bringing the stuff. And, and, of course, with nursing, they, they have to have their computers with them all, almost all the time, right? My students may not. Um, yeah, but, I mean, if we go to the hospital or something mm -hmm. and I wanted to do an activity, that'd be perfect. Oh, yeah. I just didn't know if there was an advantage mm -hmm. other than just convenience right. sometimes. Yeah. So let me go back real quick. I'm going to actually going to um, put some students in. You guys are going to be students into a class. Um, well, real quick, I'll go to classes. Here I've got one class that's here. I've archived in my other classes. Um, and so you can add a class here by clicking that. You can name it whatever you want to. And then you can start populating it with students from a roster. If you already have some students that you've already had in class, they're probably already going to be in your system. Mm -hmm. And you can just move them over or add them to a class. Um, what I'm going to do, though, is go here as students, and I'm going to add you guys as students. So you can import. You can just add a student individually, or you can import from a CSV file, which is you know, like an Excel spreadsheet. And so I'm going to do that. From D2L, yes. So you could theoretically uh, yep. just take your... Your listing from D2L yeah. and have it populated here. Right. You have to modify it to their format. And I'll show you real quick how that's going to happen. I'm going to, the way my Excel file, I'm going to show you my Excel file real quick. What it looks like. Where is that? Are there any issues with putting our student's name in a third party product like this? It sounds familiar than what we had a conversation about. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, it doesn't. that they keep things secure and mm -hmm. they have to, to have people use their stuff. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, like, can it be hacked? And if it gets hacked and they find out the student grade on this assignment, I don't right. see where that's going to, because you're not going to put final grades in there. It's no, no. It's just an, it's an assignment grade. Right? And that's not representative of that. Right, and Can you, you could if any. right, and you could put their entire OCU username or their their um, B number B number in there as their code, but I don't. I usually don't do that. I usually yeah. just assign them a, a different number. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do that. Just Where <laughs> is security issues? It's not there. Let me get it for you. you it's it in the back. back. Yeah. I 
pop up for a short period of time. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. All right, so there's my zip grade roster. All right, and we'll see who all's in here. I see I've got uh, Paul Gabb, Jim Guzak, Scott Hasselwood. Where's Scott? Is he tardy today? Okay, Susan, <laughs> Natalia didn't show up. Uh, Michael's here. Vanessa's right, yeah, right, right there. So, and then I've got some other ones. So, Katie's going to be uh, a sample student, and so. That's the way the roster needs to look. It gives you a sample of what the um, the file. If you go back to ZipGrade real quick, it says here's a sample file. You can click on it and kind of make it um, like this. And so I'm going to exit out of this real quick. Uh, no, I don't want to save that. And then I'm going to say that my header has all this information. The, the, so skip the first row because on the header of my first row back to the file, I had last name and stuff like that. If you don't click that, it's going to assume that the first row is your first student, right? All right, so I'm going to go. Did I already lose it? All right, there. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and upload that. And so now it says, here's what you've got in there. So once you match that up to what this means, so here I've got zip grade ID. I've already kind of made myself dummy proof it, so that's what's going to match up. Um, last first name and last name. So first name's gonna be first name, last name's gonna be last name. If you have done yours a little different, um, this is what they ask. And then it doesn't say that you have to put in the class, but I've already assigned these students to a class. And so when I do this, it's gonna automatically <coughs> generate that class if I don't already have it created. I didn't create a class for this, but now that I've got this finished, it's gonna automatically generate that class. Here it says I've uh, I've got um, CETL 2020 as my class, and now I have 20 students enrolled. So if I go back, you'll see that there are, let's go back to, here's classes over here. You can see occasionally there's a 2020 there. That's just the student roster. Now if I go back to classes, now it pops up, hey, there's a CETL 2020. There's my roster. Everybody's in there that I had put in. Okay. And um, Let's say it's like oh, I didn't want that, or I want to add to student. You can do that here, or you can do it on the app. You can also do that. Anytime you make a change here, it automatically changes it on the app, and vice versa. Um, so now um, let's say I wanted to give you guys your your first assignment. Um, I've, I I want to go on. Could, yeah. Would you show me like say someone got added to the class and yeah. you didn't want to resubmit the whole roster? Yeah. You can just go to. Um, Edit roster, and you can add the student from the list that's over here. But if the student's not there, this is a problem with this. There's not an, actually an option to add a student from here. If the student's brand new and it's not as part of one of your R student lists, you need to add them to a student list. And so that's where you would add Lock this. Okay. Right. And in that, you could also add them to the class, or you just add, you know I've got some students who are in more than one class. And so it'll, it would pop up class or classes, biology 1214, biology 2812, something like that. Right. Okay. All right, so go back to classes real quick. There's us. And here I'm ready to kind of put together an answer sheet. And here I can click on answer sheets and I can choose from the 50 question, the 100 question, um, or, and I don't know why the 20 one's not up there, or I can use one of my customized ones. And so like I did before, here's my my customized one, the OCU Trivia. And you can, with the 20 question or anything small, you can do like a one page when the entire sheet is your answer sheet. You can do two or you can quarter it to four. And that's what I did while ago. Um, it, it just populates this into um, quarters in there. So then you just print this off and you can just cut them up. Oh, okay. right. And so I've done that. Yeah. So let's yeah. Oh, Vanessa. So. How about you be Scott? I would love to be Scott. <laughs> you want to, if you want to sit over here, you can answer. You can answer. Okay. Cheat over Vanessa's shoulder. Right. Like, you, know, <coughs> you have to be really disruptive. All right. So does everyone have something to write with? Mm -hmm. All right. 
I'm going to go ahead and pass out your assignment now. A little OCU trivia. And so you're going to answer this, and you'll notice that there's some true and false. There's some, uh, some multiple choice as well as one multiple select. So there could be more than one answer. All right. Pass those that way. That. How much time do you have? Oh, how much time you need? How much time? Twenty points is over. Uh oh. Six doesn't have an E on it, Adam. Did I not? Oh, I sure didn't. That's that's another thing. Got to make sure you're paying attention. <laughs> And is that the answer? That is the answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually Can we did make this. Our own you know, that's like I actually did this on um, the final exam in my my class in the fall. I said, "Well, just write it into the side." And um, and so uh, and I said, "Well, what are you gonna have to go through and manually grade all 40 of these?" I said, "Okay." Mark in, here's what I told him to do. If the answer is E, I'm not saying it's E, <laughs> but if the answer is E, color in all other ones, all four of the ones that are there. Wow. And so they colored in A, B, C, and D. And then I went through my, my key and I made sure that that was the correct answer if it was. Ooh, okay. Did you have these yeah. students not do that? Yeah, was, they were yeah. like, well, it's not E, I'm not going to worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> so they got it wrong. Yeah. Because <laughs> you have to get. Uh, if you color in all four of them and say all four of them are the answer, um, you can't just get one. Right. Yeah. So you want us to yeah color so in all of color them. in all four of them. I if the answer a, is if the answer is a, yes. <laughs> I can't even remember what year I started. I'm like sitting here trying to think. When I start. <laughs> Half of us. It's all running together. I know. Yeah. <laughs> really? It's like a couple years before me, we'll help when I start. Oh my god, somebody noticed. <laughs> <laughs> and. Oops, seven. No cheating, Scott. <laughs> I don't know. It's really hard to ask. I finished the PhD and I'm. <laughs> okay, that's good. Scott gets called Dr. Hazelwood by his insurance company. It's satisfying. <laughs> that's hilarious. All right. Well, I can't get that to work, so we're gonna. I'm gonna show you real quick. Um, on the app, it looks like that. Well, actually, you can probably see it on their, their main page. It'll give you an example of what the, the app kind of looks like. Or at least it has in the past. I bet if I logged out, it would do it. Yeah. There's what the app kind of looks like right there. Yeah. yeah. And so when you scan something, it shows what it's going to look like. It's going to scan this sheet. And so what it's looking for, if you haven't figured it out, right, there's these little squares along the side, these little indicators, and there's a little bar here. So that's what it's going to be looking for. It's going to have access to your camera through the app, and it's going to scan those. And what's, uh, what I've found out that's very helpful is when you need a place that's not too well lit because then it washes out the page. Um, but you also don't want a place that's got a bunch of shadows or if you're over it like this taking, you know, it... it doesn't do very well, and so you you kind of have to find your best one. And yeah, it's kind of like depositing a check. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, yes, it's very much like taking a picture of a check and depositing it online. So I'll have those done. I actually probably did better than Scott. <laughs> Are you done? Did Scott's I get everybody's? Done. Okay. Scott's done. Paul so, did it in for Scott. So let's see. Here's Jim. I see Jim marked out one, so we're gonna yeah. have to correct that one. <laughs> but in most of the other ones, they look pretty good. So on here, what I did, I went through and set up a, a quiz. It says OCU Trivia. And if I click on it, I can modify anything. I can edit the key, which I just did. I went through and I just clicked. It's basically this, but I went through and, and clicked in those bubbles. Okay. 
Um, and then I'm going well, I back. I see the last question. And the last question is there. Um, because there's so many of them, oh, it okay. pops up a uh, multiple select there. I see. Okay. And so you can see it if you get it done. It's done. It says A, C, and D right there, but it doesn't go all the way across, just to say space. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to go kill it. And it says scan papers. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it's accessing my camera. Yeah. So then you just put it over the camera. Basically, it lights up when all four of those little squares are there. It lights up green. If it if it's not seeing one of them, it's red until you focus in on it. And then it tells you your score right away. And so this is Vanessa. It says four out of eight, 50%. Oh, my God. It's pretty consistent. What are we going to do with her? Pretty consistent. Right. <laughs> but, um, and let's say that you didn't get a really good image. She's like, well, that, and maybe you thought you moved or something like that. You can always review it. There's a little thing that says review. And it comes up and it shows you what you just did. And it says what they got wrong. So when we do yours, it's going to show we got it wrong. And there's a little mark that I can correct. So we'll do that in just a little bit. But let's say um, the image was bad or the lighting was bad. I can just go right back over it again. And it says, okay, you, this is the second time you've taken this picture. Do you want to keep the first one or do you want to override the previous? I want to override that. Okay. And what it's looking for is that student ID code. ID code. Okay. okay. Yeah. Like, that's smart yeah, it, it it recognizes that, so there's not any more one person that's got that, and it won't let you assign the same ID code to another student in your roster, okay. even in a different class. So that student roster page you have, those have to be unique unique IDs, and you can go up to ten ID spaces. Um, I I put three here. I, I, in one class, I had two where I had in a class of forty, so I went one through forty. But now, unless I delete that class, I can't create another class and go one through forty because someone else already has that, oh. right? But it's not a big deal. I can delete that class because I don't need it anymore. I'm, I'm done one. with it, right? All right. So there's Vanessa. So you don't necessarily want them to have their B number on. Them. I don't do it just because. But you can take the last five digits, four digits of their B number. It's probably going to be pretty unique and use that if you wanted to. Uh, there's Paul. Paul got a seven out of eight. And we're going to see which one. Yeah, oh, oh hmm. that's something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> all right. You, all you have to do. The 50%. Right. All you have to do is just keep going. You don't have to. After you start scanning, you don't have to do anything with your phone except just to move it over the page. All right. I missed that question about when I started. <laughs> all right. So I've got them all now. This is one BC, right? <laughs> And I, I just got to got to Jim's, and I can review his, and I can see that. Oh yeah, we got that one wrong there. Then we got it wrong, and so I can go over here. There's a little the hamburger icon in the corner here, like the three lines. You ever seen that? So like the three lines that are one on top of another. Oh yeah. So menu you pull down. I call it the hamburger. Right. And you get the bun, and okay. And then it pulls down and says, okay, what do you want to do? So I want to edit the answers, and so it pops up what they scored, and you can see it superimposes an image. You can see he on four he got A and B, but he marked through B. So I'm assuming that's the one he doesn't want not does not want to count, uh, right? And so make sure everything else looks okay. All right, so then I can go back, and now it pops up that he got it correct. Okay. Right. And that's just for that one. Yeah. Not for all. Right. Right. And so now he's got a six out of eight. So now if I want to see how the other ones did, I'm going to just kind of go back to my quizzes. Here I can review the papers. And here it's got my whole list and say, oh, I'm click on Paul, see how he did. Okay. Paul got that one wrong. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next one. Looks like there's Jim. Okay, there's Scott. And what I do for all of mine, I go through and look at their Scantron before I give them their final score. I want to make sure that maybe they did if they erased Poorly or something like that, yeah. or if they had maybe two that, and I could easily see from their scan trial, and maybe maybe just the, the scan that this image didn't show up well, and so I can I can go through and physically do that um, just by looking at them, and I can do it on the computer or on the um, on here. Okay. Oh, here's someone that got oh he got that one wrong too. So what is number five? When did we? Oh, this oldest student organization. That makes sense. That someone that wrong. I would have gotten that right because in 1922, uh, Tri-Beta started here on campus. Not 47. Right. C's get degrees. <laughs> yeah. 
So, um, oh, and then it shows, of course, what everyone got. And you can also look at some stats. What, what are the, um, you can take a look to see per question, um, how many people got that question wrong. And I actually do this while the students are bringing their stuff in. I'm kind of scanning some as they're doing this. And occasionally I'll say, looks like there's a lot of people missing question number 36. And so I like, you can actually click on um, percentage. It's like 100 people got number question number two and six right. If I want to do that from the other opposite, opposite direction, only 33% got number, uh, no, actually 33% got, yeah, got it right on number five. And so if I look at number five, I'm like, well, I have a 40 worded question. Then I could throw that one out, or I can, maybe I, maybe I, personally put the wrong answer in here, mm -hmm. I can change that and it automatically changes across the board. I don't have to go back and rescan any ones. Oh, it automatically changes that in, in the system. Okay. Um, now, so that's some things you can do with this. If you have different variants in your test, let's say if you have test A, B, C, yes. you want to split that up so that nobody's looking over everybody's shoulder, mm -hmm. uh, you actually end up having to do three separate matches in scans, mm -hmm. right? No. Yeah. Now, one of the nice things about the, now this, I didn't put that, but if you go to, you know, you can have up to five different yeah. exams. Oh, okay. All right. Um, yeah, it's uh, when you want to customize it or so. Oops. I don't know my own name. <laughs> Jim's got the password, too, if you want it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Didn't have to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> now he's going to change it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you want to do that custom answer sheet, um, you click on that, and what comes up is here you type in, I uh, say, um, OCU trivia part two. Part two. All right. Then you can choose what, are, what do you want across the top. Usually when I'm doing mine, I save as much space as I can so I can maximize my number of answers. If you get a whole the full sheet, you can get a lot of questions in there. I've got one I'll show you. I've got like 140 or something questions on one sheet. Um, but you have to be kind of creative as to how you organize your questions so they all can fit. It'll tell you if they can't fit, and then you have to go back and try to fix it. Um, so I usually say, well, I want my name. I don't necessarily need the quiz in the class, I'm, the only, I'm getting these back. That's not something I need. Because it and, has to be on one sheet for you yeah. to scan it. So yeah. You can't scan like two parts. No, right. Yeah. right. Um, and then you can click here. If you want a student ID section, which is the easiest for me, because then that automatically goes in to the system as to, so I can look at their the stats for the rest of the class and everything. And so you can choose really from one to 10 spots for a student ID. And I, again, I chose three for this. The fewer you choose, the more space you have for questions. And so I'll say I'll do five. And here's include key version. And so it'll print. You can actually, you maybe even can go more than, than that. It defaults as A, B, C, and D. So if you just have two versions, you have an A version and a B version, it'll automatically, um, you can assign a key to a specific student or when you pass them out, say if you have Exam A, color in, exam A on your answer sheet. Okay. If you have exam B, whatever. And so then when you you have two different keys, but it's the same quiz. And so then when you uh, take your image, it automatically recognizes, oh, here's A, so I assign A answers. Here's B, I assign B answers. Oh, wow. You don't have to get out of that one and then go into another one and scan. Is it easier to create... Um the various versions on your phone by blocking in the bubbles for each of the versions, or would you recommend using a laptop to be able to create those those test answer versions? Uh, yeah, you you can do either one. I, I've really never used the um, the website to enter or to create my key. Okay. I usually do it on the phone. Um, so usually because I'm doing it while they're taking the exam, I'm sitting there making up the key. Oh, wow. okay. All right, so it's there's a lot of time to be had there. So well, I'll just go ahead and make up the key while I'm doing it. So um, here's where it takes you next time. What, Sorry. Yeah. Back. Yeah. I know we got limited time, but you, you 
mentioned that if you've got a bad question, 80% missed it. Yeah. You're probably going to go in and look at it, go, yeah, that's the problem right there. Wrong, wrong wording. I'm going to throw that one out. Can you go in, because you're saying it does the automatic weighting and the figuring mm -hmm. the percentiles, et cetera, rather than lose that ability, can you just go in and say any answer is right on this question? Yeah. Yeah. And that way it doesn't screw around with anything. Right. And so just like I did with <clears throat> that one that um, I didn't have the answer for. Yeah. Right. I just went through and said, I colored in all of so the, the answer possibilities. Is all. Okay. And so then when I scan it, it's looking for, or you can do, it'll either look for all of them or you can go, I don't know if you'll see this, you click on that. You've got alternate answers as well. And so if you just click on it and there's the primary answer, but it's like, well, but it could be either A or B. And you can click on that and go, okay, there's an alternate answer. I'm going to click on that. And you give, um, it could be also A. And if you got A, that's also worth a point, not seven points. A point. Okay. And so good. you can set that up to where any answer they have is good. Um, oh, and you can also set it up to where if they answer it correctly, it's a bonus. If they didn't answer it, if they answered it incorrectly, it didn't count against them. Oh, wow. Okay. Hmm. I like that. Yeah. All right. So there's just in customizing. Um, if you wanted to do multiple choice, what it means by internal label or external? That's the is the A inside the bubble or is the A above the bubble mm -hmm. on your answer sheet? I like inside because it's safe space, and you can do up to a hundred. Um, let's say if I wanted multiple choice that had A through E and I wanted the first 25 to have that, I could do that. And it's going to add those. And it'll continuously show you what your answer sheet's going to look like. So over here on the side, that's what it looks like starting out. Say so I also want to add a multiple choice section. I want to add like, say, 10 of those. And instead of A, B, C, and D, I want to add two false for that. And so it's going to add that to me. All right, so then it's populated with a true false. You see that. And I say I also want to add, let's go, um, I want to add another, say, 20 or so that are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. You can go all the way up to J. You can add 10. And this is going to be my matching. And it's going to add those as well. And so you can see with each iteration, it kind of changes the format because it's trying to yeah. fit all those in, right? And so um, if you start adding too much, it'll tell you there is not enough space on your interest for all this. And so it could be that you can still add all of those, but you have to add them in a different order than what you did. Because now I've got all of these multiple together. Well, if I started out with my matching first, I may be able to get more stuff in later. So you have to kind of sit there and play with it. So now it's like, well, I want to change that. You kind of have to go through each one of these and delete some of those and then start or start over. Have so. you ever had an issue with a student sort of loses track of which number the question yeah. is associated with yeah. because the way those formats Yeah, are yeah. And around. that's another thing I make sure I tell them when we do our little practice exam. I said, you know, keep track. Make sure... Yeah. You're, you're looking in and I actually right and I actually on my I had that problem so much on on my exams I'll uh, have a little little footer at the bottom of the page so make sure you're on the right question double check you know so they see that okay I need to make sure that I'm on the right question so it's just another reminder I remember that that worry yeah. when we went through it because that was just common yeah and so that's how you would do an answer sheet, and then you just got to publish it. And then once you, when you have that um, put together, and you want to use it, really all you do is in your class you go and say, okay, now I want to create a packet, and there's the one I want to print it off on, and it creates that PDF. Okay. Now let me show you real quick. Here's a class that I had in the fall. And here's the exam that I gave them. This is the final exam. Now, this is going to show some students' names and scores, but I'm going to trust that you guys um, don't break FERPA regulations or something like that. You're, we're all professionals here. And so here it actually gives their stats on the exam. They did too well, apparently, because only a few of them flunked. And you can see the numbers here. Um, and then it shows here what their raw score was, how many they got correct. 
right? And it shows per on each answer also um, what the class average was, how many um, got it correct, um, alternate answers if I had alternate answers. Um, but what's really cool is that I can actually just click on each student as well, and then it gives me a report about them. And it brings up their answer sheet and then what they got wrong. And so I have that information. But what I've started doing for my students is that I give them back their answer sheet so they have that after I've recorded the score. But I also go through and I can generate a report, a, a sheet for them. Underneath this um, quick stats, there's a, you know, a little PDF. You can say a page for each paper. If you do that, you include the primary answers as well as the class answers. And so when I do that, it'll generate a, re a report. It may take a little long time here because it's how many questions I have. 140. Yeah. It may take a little time. But there'll be one page to give students. So it's yeah, it's one page that has a actually an image of their sheet that they used, as well as a table listing what the correct answer is, what the class average was. Okay. Yeah. So let's see. And speaking of our class, let's go to the quiz that we just did actually. There's those you trivia, right? And we can see that there's the scores for the folks. And here's the score I can take, or this is what I can take, and then put in B2L. I have to type it, I can't just export it. But then I can also do a report for each of the students as well. I think I got a C. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to go quicker. Remember that's lesson. not with your class. <laughs> <laughs> So that shows, here's what, here's your picture of this, and there's the, because there's so many, there's multiple answers here, it bled over, but it shows what the, the answer is itself, it's true, here's what you put, and here's the point you got for it, and then the class average right there. So you give them back that plus their original? Yeah, I want to make sure they have every, the, what they originally wrote on. Because this is the interesting thing about this, you know, in Scantrons, you give back Scantrons, they go through and erase something, they fill something in, it's like, but I had the correct uh, yeah. answer. Yeah. It's like, um, not according to this picture that was not taken of your exam. Yeah. Um, it shows that that was never caroled in when you turned it in, right? And so, here's what that looks like for them. Oh, and look at all that. That's That'd be a really good ethics the machine got re wrong. like research study. Mm -hmm. See how many people say that not yeah. realizing there's a picture associated with it. Yeah, you might pull a dirty trick on them. Give them back those first, mm -hmm. you know, their answers. Yeah. And then later on, if they pull one of those, mm -hmm. hey, here's the picture of it. Yeah. <laughs> so you got, it, it's pretty nice technology and the fact that it does a lot for you. You can just do the basics, right? If you just want to print off the blank sheets and they can write in their own name, and you use that to take the, to scan with. Um, you, you still need to have the app, and you still need to make up the key, but you can do that. But um, have to have a student ID number for that. They don't have to for that because it takes a picture of their name as well. Oh, okay, so you would just have to. Right. You'd have to have your. It would basically it would show on the here instead of. Um, let me show you. Like where it says Paul Geb across there. Mm -hmm. It would have it shows Paul get written out. He wrote that in. Right. And so now I see, okay, Paul, but I see it, it wouldn't say his name up there. Does it no. take that name? So no. you'd have to look at right. each one. You if you want a roster one. created with this yeah. and be able to do stats and stuff like that, you but would need to have you need they, to have their their roster in here. Yeah. So could they do um, fill in a student ID mm -hmm. and have that and that would read that? Oh, that, I bet so. Is that on, like, where it says 103 there on ours? Uh huh. Like, if I had that to the side and had blank ones to use just right. for daily quizzes or mm -hmm. whatever, and they just fill that yeah. in. Yes. If you wanted to do this yes. for, like, your department, you could get right. a departmental mm -hmm. license, and then each student could automatically have the the ID, mm -hmm. and then you just keep track of them that way. Right. Yeah. And you can probably keep track of all of their grades, too. Or if, if a student says, if you want to leave it up to the students to create their own ID, you, you could. Just don't, they have to be unique, right? right. Um, because the first time I did this, um, I just used a regular old sheet, and it had a space for student ID. And so I said, just put the, the last five digits of your, of your student ID in. And they, they did that. They colored it in themselves.
it wasn't pre-populated. Mm -hmm. When I first started, when I started looking at it further, it's like, well, I can actually create a roster with that information, and I can print those. And so I have to get the class a little early so I can hand out their individual answer sheets because you can't just give them any answer sheets; it's got to be theirs. Um, but and I've got a large class, so, so I just get there early to do that. Uh, but it it works out real well for um, sa saving a lot of time. Something that would take me, mm -hmm. I you know, yeah. seven pages of multiple choice. I'm going through and grading those. Now I can do those in like ten minutes as opposed to ten hours. I drink less wine when I do it, which is good for the students as well. <laughs> yeah, because I like the data you get, like knowing, mm -hmm. like if yeah. there's a bad question or you know, because as you're grading, yeah. you can figure that out. Mm -hmm. But knowing exactly, oh how yeah, many, I like all that. In the old days, I used to go through and make tick marks. How many people have missed this right. question? And so then, if there's enough, I usually say, "Well, this is, must have been poorly written." Right. Now I can do that with a touch yeah. of a button. Since there's, there's no cost to the students, right? mm -hmm. yeah, I only ask like 10 to 20 multiple choice, and the rest of the tests are right. short answer essays or problems. So mm -hmm. that just makes sense now that we could do that very yeah. easily. It would be difficult to get students to buy a scan card. Yeah. Uh, oh, so yeah. having one that's pre-printed is almost mm -hmm. And especially with, if you're just doing 20, right? You just right. you can make quarter pages. Mm -hmm. um, even if it shows, I mean, I've done some that have 50 questions mm -hmm. and it prints out a, a PDF, basically it's a PDF with 50 questions on it. But then I'll, when I go to print it, I'll say I want two PDFs per page mm -hmm. and it'll still half the page. So now I've got a half page and it's a little bit smaller than right. what, but it, it still works. scans fine. Yeah. yeah. So you're saving a little, little bit, or you can say half that page is going to be your Scantron, the other half are going to be some questions. Mm -hmm. I've done that in the past too, where the, the actual sheet and the questions are on the same. I've had to, I can't do it through this. I actually modify it. I create a PDF, and then I merge the two together, and then I print them at the same time. So it's, I can, I get quite creative, and it's just something you have to sit there and mess with a while because. After I started diving into more details, like, wow, I didn't know I could do this. I didn't know I could customize all these different answer sheets where I can get 140 questions on an exam. Because when I did before, I had like 140 questions, but I ended up having to do two. Right. That's uh, part one and part two. Yeah. And so the finish part, they was finished part one, so okay, now turn that in. Here's part two. They would do that. Um, but it got, it was a little better to just to modify the answer sheet to how I wanted it. And you can use any letters. You know, like uh, there's one question I have that relates to carbon fixation and uh, light reactions of photosynthesis. And so I say I want you to assign this as being part of carbon fixation. This is to light reactions. So I go if it's carbon fixation, color in C. If it's light reaction, color in L. You don't have to do A, B. It can be whatever. Oh, okay. So there's kind of an associated right. word. Mm -hmm. Letter. Yeah. Just like how you did the true false. Yeah. You just, you just go T and F. You can do whatever yeah. letters you want to. It has to be a single letter, though. I can't type out true and type out false. Otherwise, it'll be T R U E is the <laughs> options, right? It's going to be a single letter. So, so it how, just how takes some messing with. Huh? How long did you do that? I uh, started in, let's see, fall of 18. Yeah. Fall of 18, I started using it. Right in the middle of the semester, and so the students started kind of being guinea pigs in that in that semester. So website's fall. been up a while. No, it's fall of seventeen. Oh, so that's it's yeah. Not a fly by night. No, and I've and I was actually looking at YouTube videos in preparing for this. I said, I wonder if there's any YouTube videos you can just go see, you know, that help you. And there are some, but there's some that are older that have even an older version of the app. And so like I don't remember seeing that on the app um, because it was from like 2015. It was uh, YouTube, and so they've updated the app since. Then. Okay. Um, but there are some out there um, from educational websites and stuff that have YouTube videos um, how to use this as well. I could have just said, "Okay, here we're going to watch this together," and that's that could have been our workshop today. But <laughs> <laughs> so I do my other classes. How do they make their money? It's I don't. Only seven and I don't know because there's not any ads either. Yeah, I'm, yeah. it um, might have just been made for that person to do their own thing. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, if if you have questions about it when you start using it, let me know. Something I was that 
Vanessa made me think of though, when you're um, if you're just wanting some like feedback or so in the field, say you're at a hospital and you want feedback. In that situation, I use uh, Poll Everywhere a lot because yeah. you can just create those and say students go here and they can do that on their phone, right? and you get instant feedback on that. If it's not point bearing, right? If it's not something that really the hospitals are just really weird about us being on our phones in certain areas. Well, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So I, this I could actually see being very useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes. Uh, yeah, and you might just print off a stack or so and say, okay, pull out a quiz card, mm -hmm. and <laughs> bubble it in, and then later on you can make up the quiz or make up the key. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I was asking, like, for the student ID and all that, mm -hmm. because then if you're just, you know, sometimes you don't know where class is going to lead you mm -hmm. in the hospital yeah. or whatever, you can just mm -hmm. do that on the fly and then, like, get a Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, I yeah. <laughs> I can see that a lot. If you if you have them or if you print them off or you have them, say, make up a whole sheet of answer mm -hmm. sheets, you know, and, and cut them off and bring them with you to class. Yeah. Um, and then it's okay, we're going to have a quiz. Well, then you if you have one as well, you can already bubble in your right. key. <clears throat> and then you can just take a picture of that. That's your key. You don't have to use the phone to, you still have to right. use the phone to take a picture. Um, but you can make your key up two different ways. I can see that being very helpful. Mm -hmm. All right, that's all I got for you.